A thumb pulls back the hammer on a loaded pistol. Even under all his thick, warm layers of coats and sweaters to protect him from the cold, the musher can still feel his heart pounding in his chest. All the long months of training with his team has all been leading to this moment. He grips the reins as tightly as he can, all eight of his dogs attached to the other side of the sled beneath his feet. It's about to start any second now. Bang! The shot of the starter pistol rings out, and the second it does, all 16 pairs of paws are dashing through the icy Alaskan snow. The musher catches specks of white as they spray out from the sled in front and encourages his pack to pull harder, run faster. The race is on, and he intends to win. Then, all of a sudden, he hears an agitating, grating voice calling out to him, trying to divert his attention away from the race. Out of the corner of his peripheral, he notices the movement of another pack of dogs, pulling another sled up alongside his. They wouldn't try to ram him and knock his sled off course, but the musher still expects them to try and overtake, so he shoots a glance to his fellow competitor. And under his scarf, his jaw drops at who he sees driving the other sled. It can't be. It makes absolutely no sense that someone with that degree of wealth would be taking part in a dog sled race through the snow. But even under his ski goggles, the musher is certain of who he's looking at. It's him, grinning and waving at the musher from a neighboring sled. One thought shoots across his mind. Is that Elon Musk? The eccentric billionaire signals the musher to lower the fur-lined hood of his winter coat. Still unable to fully believe his own eyes, let alone come up with a logical explanation for what he's seeing, the musher finds himself lifting the hood back so he can hear what the man has to say. His smile is unnatural, overly forced, like he's trying too hard to replicate what a normal human expression looks like. The moment the musher's hood is down, he hears that bizarrely familiar tone of voice again as the man starts selling. He's trying to sell him one of those outlandish brain chips of his. The musher remembers reading an article about them and the billionaire's strange and unbelievable claims as to what these dangerous implants can do. Are people already so wise to his products being scams that he's resorting to propositioning random sled racers? The race. The musher is so distracted by the hard-pitching billionaire that he almost forgets to focus on the path in front of him. And at any rate, even if he did want a microchip installed in his head, he definitely can't afford the price tag. He tells the man to get lost, then focuses on his dogs, only to hear the deafening sound of a jet engine erupting next to him, followed by a huge wall of snow. It's an avalanche. Hours later, the musher wakes up in the hospital, having been dragged out of the snow. The doctor asks him what happened, and when he tells the doctor that he was distracted by Elon Musk trying to sell him cutting-edge technology, the doctor orders an immediate brain scan. However, the results of the brain scan come back clean. No brain damage, no illicit chemicals, but no matter what, the musher sticks to his story. Elon Musk distracted him on the slopes that day. Elon Musk and his gaggle of cyborg dogs. A nondescript man in a black suit turns up later that day, claiming to be a psychological specialist. The doctors leave the man in the black suit alone with the musher. The strange man notes down every detail of the story. He doesn't judge, he doesn't dispute, he just listens to every bizarre detail. Elon Musk, cyborg dogs, avalanche and all. When the story is done, the man in black pulls a photograph from his jacket and asks if this was the man the musher saw out there on the slopes. But no. The photo shows a bizarre creature, vaguely human-shaped but with multiple pairs of arms and horns sprouting from the top of its head. The only thing it has in common with the man he saw on the slopes is the creature's face. It's the face of Elon Musk. This whole ordeal makes the musher feel incredibly distressed, but the man in the black suit remains calm. He tells the musher that he can make it all better. He gives the musher a special medication that makes the memory of his time on the slope fade away. It feels as strange and distant as a half-remembered dream. But that doesn't mean it wasn't real. The warning of buyer beware is always applicable, but especially when you're buying from a businessman with a history of dubious claims, or at least someone who looks an awful lot like said businessman. Meet SCP-3710, or as those working among the staff at the SCP Foundation have taken to calling it, Elon Mush. Now, SCP-3710 isn't a single entity, but rather a collection of strange anomalies that manifest together to form the SCP in question. On their own, each entity is just a component, but you put them all together, and you have… well, one of the strangest anomalies in the Foundation's catalog. Primarily, SCP-3710 consists of a pack of eight dogs, except of course, these aren't the average pooches you'd find at the local pound. 
They're highly anomalous. Each one of these peculiar pups has been extensively cybernetically enhanced, and even bears a close resemblance to the dogs that form SCP-2624, an anomalous cybernetic space dog. How enhanced are we talking exactly? Well, if you're looking for technical specifications, how does a miniaturized Raptor rocket propulsion device sound? Each of these cyber canines is equipped with one of these methane-powered rocket boosters, and Foundation researchers believe that the propulsion system of each one is fueled by the dog's digestive system. All eight of these cybernetic dogs are reined to a sled in what seems to be a weird mix of high-tech and low-tech transportation. But SCP-3710 is clearly another of the many anomalies that aren't concerned with making sense. The sled itself appears to be totally ordinary from the outside, apart from the addition of the two twin Raptor rocket propulsion devices welded to the back. Okay, so it's a dog sled that's been modified by someone who either really likes to go fast or is a complete lunatic. Or maybe both. A large white X is also painted on the wooden bed of the dog sled, but that is far from the strangest physical property of the wood itself. The material used to construct this part of SCP-3710 is stronger than any wood known to man. Presumably achieved through some anomalous means, the normally highly flammable material possesses a physically impossible resistance to fire. Neither the excessive heat from the eight dogs' rockets or the pair mounted on the sled itself are enough to cause the wooden sled to combust. It simply doesn't burn, making it surprisingly an even safer vehicle than your average Tesla. Then there's the driver of this anomalous dog sled. SCP-3710-1 is a humanoid entity that claims to be the world's most Twitter-addicted businessman, Elon Musk. However, the creature itself has an entirely different physical appearance from the billionaire himself, apart from its extremely recognizable face. The most striking baseline physical dissimilarities are, of course, the fact that the creature possesses four arms and horns that protrude noticeably from its skull. Despite being fluent in quotes from Elon Musk, SCP-3710-1 shares none of the same behavioral traits, which is undoubtedly a redeeming factor for this anomaly. The SCP Foundation researchers who study SCP-3710-1 have discovered, through all recorded interactions with the entity, that its mannerisms more closely resemble that of a door-to-door -door salesperson than an abrasive CEO. However, despite all these obvious differences, anyone unlucky enough to interact with an instance of SCP-3710-1 will believe the entity is, in fact, Elon Musk, thanks to a latent mimetic effect. And while that's undoubtedly unpleasant for all involved, it gets slightly worse. You might notice that we did use the phrase, an instance of SCP-3710-1, because, that's right, there's more than one. Specifically, and mercifully, only two that the Foundation is currently aware of, both manifesting with their own rocket-powered cyberdog-driven sleds. Now, once you recover from the horror at the possibility of a world with more than one version of a sled-driving electric car CEO, you might find yourself confused as to the connection between the aforementioned business magnate and the sport of dog sledding. The same confusion baffles the Foundation too, but here's what they do know so far. SCP-3710, that's the Robodogs, the sled, and their painfully irritating passenger, are known to manifest at random intervals along the route of the Iditarod Trail sled dog race. This is an annual long-distance dog sled racing event that occurs in early March in Alaska. The route usually runs from the state's largest city of Anchorage to the southern Seward Peninsula city of Nome. Upon appearing, SCP-3710 will then chase after a targeted racer taking part in the Iditarod, following them until it is alongside them or at least within vocal range. Now, you might be worried that this anomaly tries to take part in the sled race or somehow harm the other contenders. While its goal is disrupting the Iditarod, it's not known to cause active harm. Once it catches the attention of another sled racer, then SCP-3710 attempts to persuade the competitor to purchase one of the latest products currently being produced by one of the billionaire's various companies. Of course, if you are participating in an annual dog sled race and suddenly you see what appears to be one of the most famous CEOs in the world pull up beside you in a sled pulled by cybernetically enhanced dogs, you might be compelled to do one of two things. The first being speed up to try and escape him. The other might be to hear him out, to satiate your curiosity if nothing else. But the average participant in the Iditarod typically can't afford one of the more cutting-edge products offered by the billionaire's various companies. So naturally, they typically refuse, because they either don't need or can't pay for something so expensive. This doesn't deter SCP-3710, however. 
Apparently, the one trait it shares with the person it impersonates is a lack of understanding for the financial status of average everyday people. So it keeps offering, until the other sled racer has refused at least three times, sometimes requiring more, to really drive the message home. With that, SCP-3710 typically takes off, stating it isn't interested in negotiating any further, and engages the propulsion devices of its eight robo-dogs and the two on the back of the sled. Of course, these highly dangerous Raptor boosters can cause severe burns, blunt force wind damage, and other environmental hazards to the other racers. The first recorded appearance of SCP-3710 takes place in the year 1995. During the course of the year's Iditarod, the entity makes several attempts to sell ZIP-2 software licenses to the various racers competing in the sledding event. Given that it offers these licenses at the staggering fee of $50,000 each, not one of the participants is interested. Shortly after the conclusion of the Iditarod 95, the SCP Foundation starts looking into the anomaly. They begin by contacting the real deal, Elon Musk himself. When asked about his whereabouts, he tells the Foundation that he was in New York City, over 3,000 miles away from where the Iditarod takes place every year. The Foundation, having confirmed that the entity manifesting during the sled race was, indeed, an imposter, try next to capture the anomaly. This doesn't go well at all. They send out six Foundation operatives, all of them disguised as dog sled racers. SCP-3710 manifests yet again, but manages to evade the six-person team sent to capture it. It flies away by firing up its boosters and thoughtlessly buries the six Foundation agents under an avalanche. However, as we all most likely know by now, the SCP Foundation isn't one for giving up after just one try. They proceed to make numerous attempts to capture and question SCP-3710, including going as far as to administer amnestics to any of the Iditarod competitors who claim to have seen the entity. That way, with their memories wiped, word of the strange sledding salesman can never get out to the public. Whenever it appears during the annual Alaskan sled race, Foundation agents on the site attempt to use specialized tranquilizer rifles to apprehend SCP-3710. These, however, usually don't work, given the anomaly's fondness for just flying away with its RoboDog's boosters or vanishing entirely when it demanifests. But you're probably wondering what happens should someone decide to accept one of SCP-3710's extortionate offers during the race. Can somebody actually purchase an overpriced electric car or a potentially deadly brain chip from the anomaly? The Foundation ponders the very same question, and during one of their many containment attempts, is able to get an answer. Agent Cheyenne McCormick is sent undercover to participate in the annual Iditarod trail sled dog race. Her instructions from the Foundation higher-ups are clear. Should she encounter SCP-3710, she's to reject its first two attempts at selling her anything, but then the third time it offers, McCormick is told to accept. Armed with a debit card containing $100,000, she sets out on her sled. One key detail is left out. Nobody tells Agent McCormick what SCP-3710-1 looks like. While she's out on the Iditarod, her dogs racing along and pulling her sled behind them through the snow, the agent soon becomes aware of another pack of dogs running up alongside hers. A short few seconds later, and she soon hears a voice hailing her from the other sled. SCP-3710-1 greets her as a valued customer and gives a disjointed opening speech as an introduction to its sales pitch. It begins by talking about doing something important even when the odds are not in your favor. SCP-3710-1 claims brands are just perception and that perceptions can change over time. Then it doubles down its previous statement by stating that brands are just the collective impression of a product. That's when it offers her a brand new Tesla electric car. Confused, the agent questions if SCP-3710-1 is meant to be who she thinks it's meant to be. The entity claims it is, indeed, the one and only highly recognizable businessman. It also states that it would be in violation of SpaceX policy if it wasn't who it claims to be, before then offering the Foundation agent a Tesla for over $200,000. When she rejects the offer and tells the entity she can't afford that, it then lowers the price to $150,000. SCP-3710-1 also claims that when Henry Ford first made cheap, reliable cars available to the public, there were those who rejected this in favor of horses. The agent follows her prior instructions and tells the entity for a second time that the asking price is too expensive. Using presumably much the same justification the real Elon Musk employs, SCP-3710-1 explains that offering a compelling product means charging a premium. However, it then offers Agent McCormick the third, lower price of 
It even makes the lofty promise that she could be driving her new Tesla as early as the following day. Just as she has been told to, the agent accepts the much lower price. As thanks for doing business, the product hawking anomaly includes an additional bonus to her purchase. It says it will give the agent a once-in-a-lifetime add-on, and not one typically seen with other electric car purchases. SCP-3710-1 claims it will give cybernetic rocket propulsion enhancements to both Agent McCormick and her team of sled dogs. It tells her that the first step is to establish something as physically impossible, then cybernetic surgery can occur. Before the agent can even question what is going on, something happens that causes her to suddenly vanish without a trace. The Foundation is confounded following the loss of contact with Agent McCormick. A team of retrieval operatives is deployed to her latest known location within the area of Alaska where the Iditarod takes place. They follow her last recorded GPS tracker to find no evidence of where she went or what happened to her. Even the dogs that had been pulling her sled are nowhere to be found. Any hope that she'd be found alive and well dissipates the moment that the retrieval team comes across Agent McCormick's abandoned sled, left unattended in the middle of the trail. Beyond the audio recordings of the interaction between the agent and SCP-3710-1, there is only one other piece of evidence to prove that it even took place at all. Foundation agents notice a bank transfer bearing the exact date of Agent McCormick's untimely disappearance. The amount transferred is $50,000, sent from an SCP Foundation front company to the sales account of Tesla Incorporated. For three whole weeks following the incident, there's no change, no sign of the missing agent, and no reappearance of SCP-3710. That is, until a blip is noticed on one of the SCP Foundation's monitors, a tiny blinking spot on a map, highlighting a location so far away that nobody would ever think to even search there. Agent McCormick's GPS locator has reactivated, but she's not in Alaska anymore. Instead, the signal relayed to the Foundation puts her over five and a half thousand miles away, in Tahiti. The Foundation hurries to triangulate her exact position, and a retrieval team is sent out to her coordinates. It looks like she's somewhere off the western coast of the French Polynesian island, in the shallower waters of the Pacific Ocean. The team rushes to the location, hoping that if they make it quick enough, their fellow Foundation operative will still be alive, although we're not certain any of them could predict what they'd actually find. Following the GPS locator, the team discovers a Tesla Model 3, a car that isn't due to be released until several months from the time they found it. Immediately, the retrieval experts begin to examine the vehicle, searching for any further signs of the missing Foundation agent, and sure enough, they quickly find her. Agent McCormick is alive in the trunk of the electric vehicle, although not exactly in the same state she was in when she disappeared. Much to the horror of those that have discovered her, the agent has undergone severe and invasive cybernetic surgical modification. Anyone with an affinity for that type of enhancement might hope for a mechanical arm that shoots rockets or has hidden blades or maybe a spinal device that can make a person run faster than the human eye can perceive. But Foundation agent Cheyenne McCormick isn't so lucky. Her entire lower jaw, including her esophagus, has been replaced with a Raptor propulsion device. Whoever is responsible for the mechanical modification of the missing agent had left a handwritten note attached to Agent McCormick's forehead, which read, Thank you for purchasing from Tesla Incorporated. We deeply regret the conditions under which we are forced to return your representative. An accident occurred when they attempted to prevent the agreed-upon dog modification, as stated in Article 1, Subsection 3 of our Verbal Purchase Agreement. Upon purchase, the customer shall seed all dogs in his or her possession for propulsion modification in preparation for SpaceX's excursion to Enceladus. The note then concludes with a link to fill out a customer satisfaction survey. Foundation experts would later discover that this URL posed a cognitohazardous threat. Additionally, the note contained thanks for the agent's contribution of money and dogs towards the Tesla SpaceX Rocket Dog Initiative. After stating he hopes they'll shop with Tesla again, the note is signed with the all-too-familiar name of the company's infamous CEO. The following year, the Iditarod starts up once again, and just like many times before, SCP-3710 makes its usual repeat appearance, but this time, there's a slight difference. Now, a second identical instance of SCP-3710-1 manifests alongside the original, with its own matching rocket-powered sled complete with cybernetically modified dogs. The dog team pulling this new instance's sled matches the description of the dogs that had pulled Agent McCormick's sled a year earlier. But of course, they too have seemingly undergone the same cybernetic surgery to implant them with Raptor propulsion devices. 
The SCP Foundation's researchers theorize that SCP-3710 manifests during the Iditarod race primarily for two reasons. For one, it's an isolated route through the snowy tundra of Alaska, with not a lot of witnesses, save for the participating sled racers and their dogs. But therein lies the second reason. The dogs. Given the intense physical training these sled dogs undergo, it seems that makes them ideal candidates for SCP-3710's cruel, sadistic, and unapproved cybernetic experiments. As the old adage says, buyer beware, and as a general rule of thumb, we'd recommend not buying anything from someone who claims to be a genius. Instead, use that money to join the Dr. Bob Patreon and become a junior researcher today. Now go and watch another entry from the files of Dr. Bob, like SCP-280, Eyes in the Dark.